Our speaker today is Allison Heil. Allison and her husband Matthew have been members of the Ethical Society of St. Louis for 40 years. Allison has a master's in counseling psychology with an emphasis in human sexuality. She worked at Hope Clinic, an independent abortion clinic across the river in Illinois for 30 years, ran a statewide organization that trained adults to be better sexuality educators, and when she retired, she helped found the Missouri Abortion Fund and continues to serve on their board. Recently, a, a nurse asked her if she had any questions, and she replied, yes, do you know about the Missouri Abortion Fund? <laughs> we help Missourians pay for care wherever they have to travel. So what if the ballot initiative in Missouri reinstating Roe doesn't pass? What if it does? What will be the different for people seeking abortion care in Missouri? What has changed in the past two years since Roe fell? Let's get an inside view of what's going on and what you can do. Please welcome today's speaker, Allison Heil. That was a great song. I, I, I don't know who picked it out, but they did well. I, uh, I was the person at Hope Clinic that the, all the other counselors gave a, a, a mother-daughter angry situation to me because they didn't want to deal with it. And I spent a lot of time explaining to mothers that if we do an abortion today that your daughter doesn't want, it will ruin your relationship with her. And I would end up giving them homework to do and send them away for a couple weeks. And sometimes they would come back and the daughter would have the abortion on her own volition and sometimes they wouldn't come back. So that song is very meaningful to me. So it's me talking about abortion again. I do this a lot, you know, at a, at a doctor's office or in the grocery store checkout line or wherever. <laughs> My pronouns are she and her. And while I am a founding board member of the Missouri Abortion Fund, I'm speaking just for myself today, uh, not for, not for the, the fund itself, but for a variety of groups. And I'm gonna tell you how we got into this mess, what's happening now, and what are, what are a couple plans for the future? I'm also aware that you can't put more than one person in a room and have everybody agree on the abortion issue. Where do I point it? That one? There we go. Oh, I got it. Okay. We're on a roll. <coughs> So let's go back to 1973 and, and talk about what, what Roe v. Wade actually said. The Supreme Court compromised between people who didn't want any abortion at all and people who wanted abortion throughout pregnancy. So this compromise that the Supreme Court came up with said in the first trimester of pregnancy or the first 12 weeks, abortion was a decision between a pregnant person and their physician. In the second trimester of pregnancy, the Supreme Court said that states could place restrictions on abortion with regard to the health of the pregnant person. And in the third trimester, states could outlaw abortion, which Missouri did. And, and I included this graph to show you that really only about six or seven percent of abortions in this country occur in the third trimester of pregnancy. So after Roe v. Wade passed, independent clinics sprung up across the country. Planned Parenthood clinics were slower to follow than the independent clinics. With Roe in place, Missouri slowly passed the following laws, which are still in effect. In 1974, Missouri banned abortion after viability, and they banned non-physicians from performing abortions, meaning nurse practitioners, and they required hospital privileges for the physician within 30 miles of the clinic. In 1975, they required that health centers that performed abortion 
have reporting requirements and be licensed. In 1979, the state of Missouri mandated parental involvement for minors. In 1983, get this, Missouri banned the use of private insurance for abortion. Even if your insurance would cover it and that's what you wanted, it's not legal to use private insurance for abortion in Missouri. In 1989, Missouri banned Medicaid coverage and banned public funding for services that even refer for abortion. Now, think 100 health departments across the state of Missouri. In 1999, Missouri banned a common type of procedure used in the second trimester of pregnancy. And in 2003, Missouri mandated an anti-abortion booklet be read by a physician to a person considering abortion and also evaluate that person for physical or psychological risks. And this booklet contained things like the state of Missouri believe, believes that life, of, that life begins at conception, there were claims of fetal pain in that booklet, and they also said that it had to be offered an ultrasound, that the, the, the patient could watch an ultrasound. And in that same year, Missouri said there has to be a 24-hour waiting period between the time the physician reads that booklet to a person and the time the abortion procedure is performed. In 2005, Missouri banned assisting minors with judicial bypasses. So there's a, there's a law in place saying you have to have parental consent, but you can have a judicial bypass, but nobody can help you get that judicial bypass. And do you all know where to go to get a judicial bypass? <laughs> so this put a civil liability on friends, family members, teachers, clergy, etc. In 2007, Missouri banned sex educators in schools from any agency that refers for abortion. Now, that knocked me out because I worked at Hope Clinic in Illinois, and I used to come out to Fort Dumbold High Schools and speak on birth control. Can't do that anymore. In 2007, the state of Missouri gave $2 million to crisis pregnancy centers. Those are fake, pregnant, fake abortion clinics, like Birthright on Bluestone Drive in St. Charles or Thrive Women's Health Express in, on Mid Rivers Mall Drive. And they do things like offer free pregnancy tests, sexually transmitted infection tests, because of course if you're pregnant you probably have a sexually transmitted infection, and an ultrasound to confirm the viability of the pregnancy, because you might not need an abortion, it might not be a viable pregnancy anyway. And of course that's their this, that's the reasoning, public reasoning, but they really want to show um, details of fetal development. In 2010, Missouri passed a fetal anesthesia requirement with no scientific evidence that fetal pain occurs after viability or occurs pre viability. In 2013, Missouri banned the use of telemedicine for abortion, and this is because the FDA had approved mifepristone or the abortion pill. In 2017, Missouri allowed employers to deny birth control in their health plans, and they required two visits with the same physician before an abortion could be done. So it had to be the same physician that read the anti-abortion booklet and the same physician that provided the abortion. Before that, because I worked for an employer that denied birth control way before 2017. Ah, okay. A Catholic hospital. Oh, well, yeah, well, that's a whole different story. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, they're an employer and they denied it. I, um, if I'm in an ambulance and the closest, and I'm going to die and the closest hospital is a Catholic hospital, you can take me there. But otherwise, I'm not going because I want the, the right to withdraw life support. Mm -hmm. Different topic. <laughs> um, in, so in 2017, Missouri also gave $4.2 million in TANF money to religious-based anti-abortion counseling centers. TANF is temporary assistance for needy families. So we have taken $4.2 million out of assistance for needy families and given it to fake clinics that try and dissuade people from having abortions. In 2018, 
these same faith-based anti-abortion counseling centers got tax credits. And in 2019, a 72-hour mand mandatory delay, the longest in the country, was enacted. And Missouri also passed a trigger law so that if Roe versus Wade fell, they could immediately outlaw abortion. You think they were watching the makeup of the Supreme Court? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. They also, in 2019, went ahead and just passed an unconstitutional ban, ban on abortion because they knew the Supreme Court would back them up. And the exceptions were so vague that no abortions, even at BJC, were being performed for any reason. This list does not even include the Supreme Court's Dobbs decision, which came down in June of 2022. The, the Dobbs decision says each state can make up their own laws on abortion. Ten minutes after Dobbs' decision was handed down, Missouri was the first state to use its trigger law to completely ban abortions. In Missouri, it is now a felony published punishable by five to 15 years in prison to perform or induce an abortion. And that includes handing somebody an abortion pill. Doctors could lose their licenses. And again, exceptions are so limited that no physician is willing to test them. The law does say that people who undergo the procedure cannot be prosecuted. Let's go back. In the early 80s, when I worked at Hope Clinic, I visited all the abortion providers anywhere near St. Louis. There were five abortion providers in St. Louis, and Planned Parenthood was not one of them. There was an independent clinic called Reproductive Health Services located in the Central West End on the second floor of the doctor's building. Now, that space is now occupied by a, um, a Whole Foods, so if you ever have out-of-town guests and you take them over to St. Louis and give them a tour, you can mention that that Whole Foods is the location of the first legal abortion in Missouri. <laughs> I give great tours. <laughs> there was also Hope Clinic in Illinois, Women's Care on McKelvey, the Lady Center on Del Mar, Dr. Escobedo on Manchester. And outside St. Louis, there was Comprehensive Health in Kansas City, National Health Care in Peoria, Dr. Troopin in Champaign, Dr. Ragsdale in Rockford, and a GP who did procedures in his family practice in Carthage, Illinois, which is really probably how abortions ought to be performed anyway. And there were a handful in Chicagoland, two of which still had mafia ties left over from when abortion was illegal. I visited both those clinics. That's a topic for another day. But it's, they're interesting stories. Currently, there are zero abortion providers operating in Missouri. Hope Clinic is still in Granite City, Illinois. And because Missouri laws, the whole list I mentioned, were passed, Planned Parenthood opened up a new clinic in Fairview Heights, Illinois. After Dobbs, another clinic opened in Highland, Illinois, and three clinics opened in Carbondale. And this was to help handle the fact that no southern states have access to legal abortion. So people are driving from Florida and South Carolina and Virginia. They're coming all this way to Illinois to get an abortion. Most of the Planned Parenthoods in Illinois offer the abortion pill for early terminations. But later procedures for medical reasons require travel at least as far away as the red dots. That's Maryland and Colorado. 36 states require parental notification, and Illinois is not one of them. Look at that map. All of the orange states are where abortion is illegal or restricted, and the blue states are where abortion is legal and or protected. So since Dobbs, since we made abortion illegal in many states, the Supreme Court has handed down the EMTALA case. EMTALA stands for Emergency Medical Treatment and Labor Act. And that case is concerning abortion care in medical emergencies in Idaho. Under EMTALA, everyone is guaranteed treatment for emergency medical conditions, including a stabilizing emergency abortion. 
anti-abortion extremists in Idaho and around the country sought to exclude pregnant people from the protections provided by EMTALA. And they put providers in impossible situations, choosing between life-saving care or risking legal punishment. Let's be clear. This decision that the Supreme Court handed down did not rule on the content of the case. It merely dismissed it and pushed it back down to the lower courts. So while abortion care and emergency medical situations is technically allowed in Idaho for now, this ruling does not explicitly protect pregnant people or clinicians. In her dissent, Justice Katanji Brown Jackson wrote, Today's decision is not a victory for pregnant patients in Idaho. It is a delay. While this court dawdles and the country waits, pregnant people experiencing emergency medical co conditions remain in a precarious position as their doctors are kept in the dark about exactly what the law requires. Now, take a minute and let that slide sink in. There is a post-Roe crisis in this country, and that includes the exodus of OBGYNs out of abortion states, because doctors are legally prohibited from giving their patients adequate or even life-saving care. As the crisis worsens across the country, doctors are warning that the system will collapse, especially when it comes to maternity care in rural areas. Medical residents are not applying to programs in banned states. Almost half the counties in Missouri are already maternity care deserts. Missouri has the seventh highest maternal mortality rate in the country. Now, while that sounds bad, remember, it's even worse. The United States has the worst maternal mortality rate in the industrialized world. And now, in 2003, Missouri has allocated $8.3 million to its shiny new Alternatives to Abortion program. Taxpayer dollars are funding anti-abortion clinics and media ads designed to deceive abortion seekers. Oops, one's supposed to change it. You have to watch that one again. In June, a federal district court was asked to block a Tennessee measure criminalizing helping a young person access legal care outside of Tennessee. Without emergency relief, this measure threatens to punish someone who helps a young Tennessean obtain out-of-state care. That person is called a helper, and unless the helper secures written, notarized consent from the young person's parent or legal guardian for each form of support they need, travel, loan, whatever, they can be prosecuted. The measure is so unclear that helpers cannot determine if their support violates the measure or not, and prosecutors have unbridled ability to target anyone whom they disfavor. Remember, anti-choice lawmakers share a whole database of anti-abortion laws all across the country that they draw from. A positive case that I want you to be aware of and watching is Reverend Tracy Blackman versus Missouri. 14 tax-paying Missouri clergy members, Christian, Jewish, and Unitarian Universalists, use separation of church and state to sue Missouri when it banned abortion. The temporary bad news is that a St. Louis Circuit, George, Circuit Court judge said Republican lawmakers who banned abortion were not trying to impose their religious beliefs. So on July 3rd of this year, this clergy group decided to take their fight of separation of church and state to the Missouri Supreme Court. They put it in a, in a jurisdiction that was not going to take it to the U.S. Supreme Court, but to the Missouri Supreme Court. So that has some potential. Uh, Reverend Blackman spoke at the Ethical Society of St. Louis. Uh, the Citizens United for Church and State group uh, had a, a training session in our, our lower level. And Denise Lieberman, who's the attorney for um, this case, presented a, prof a platform at the Ethical Society of St. Louis. Now you can see. 
So I, I told you how we got here and how, how are pregnant Missourians dealing with this if they don't want to be pregnant? They're traveling to Haven States is what they're doing. And that's not terrible if you live in O'Fallon, Missouri. But if you live in the middle of Missouri, you've got a long drive to get to Illinois. Some people are getting abortion pills by mail. Now this is not to be confused with emergency contraception. Emergency contraception only works for a few days after pregnancy, after sex, excuse me. Emergency contraception only works for a few days after sex. The Ethical Society of St. Louis has free emergency contraception in all of our restrooms in nice brown paper wrappers. And if you want them, talk to me and I'll link you up with the Missouri Family Health Council who will give them to you all. The actual abortion pill is very safe. It induces a miscarriage, but it's not legal in many states, including Missouri. There are websites where people can order emergency contraception. Now, some of them are fake and they're from Mexico and they don't work, but a couple of them are really good sites that give the actual mifepristone and, mif and mifeprex. Abuzzhealth.com is one of those sites. Pills can be ordered at any time just to have in case someone gets pregnant. They work up to 13 weeks from the first day of the last menstrual period and they cost $150. I want you to remember that I said it is punishable by 5 to 15 years in prison to hand somebody one of those pills. The National Network of Abortion Funds, of which Missouri Abortion Fund is a part, has been a tremendous help all across the country. In 2022, before Dobbs, the, this group's member funds supported 74% of those people in need. Right after Dobbs, donations shot up quickly, and, but temporarily, and when they went way up, they were able to support many more people. But Dobbs has multiplied the barriers and the number of people needing financial help has risen. More people need help now, but fewer of them can receive it. Costs to obtain abortion have risen dramatically. Think time off work, gas, hotels, transportation, childcare. Remember, the majority of people who have an abortion have already had a child. The Midwest Access Coalition helps people with transportation. They pay for flights, gas, hotels, food, toiletries, etc. The Chicago Abortion Fund has been around for decades and it helps people all across the Midwest, but it's smaller than the Missouri Abortion Fund and it's spread really thinly right now. Resources for abortion delivery, I'm going to call that RAD, ends next month. RAD has included millions and millions of dollars from an anonymous donor to pay for abortion care if somebody is from a banned state, less than 12 weeks in the pregnancy, and goes to an independent clinic, meaning a non-Planned Parenthood clinic, because Planned Parenthood has separate funds. The end of RAD will impact indie clinics dramatically. And remember, there are more indie clinics in the U.S. providing abortions than there are Planned Parenthoods providing abortions. In the U.S., the need is always greater than funding, and loss of RAD creates a tremendous pull to fill in, to pull in for other abortion funds to fill in. Let me talk about the Missouri Abortion Fund for just a minute. We partner with 13 clinics in five different states to fund abortions for Missourians, and we give out about $100,000 every month. In the last year, we provided funding for over 300, excuse me, over 3,000 individuals with over a million dollars. And that includes $10,000 for patients with fetal anomalies who were forced to travel outside of the Midwest. I'm gonna go back. Brown dots represent where a second trimester abortion can be 
performed blue dots are first trimester and the red dots are where somebody can get third trimester procedure done in, in case of medical emergency. Since 2022, we have provided almost $2 million for abortion care, helping almost 6,000 abortion patients. Contributions to abortion funds, including the Missouri Abortion Fund, were high at the news of Roe falling, but have slowed down, and we are now unable to help about a third of the people who need financial help. People needed help in 2015 when we started this fund, and since then, that need has skyrocketed. We're also finding that many people in rural areas don't know they can still legally leave the state of Missouri to receive abortion care. We have partnered with a group called Right By You to let people know. You may remember seeing the news about our two groups handing out free emergency contraception at an Olivia Rodrigo concert. Now, if you don't know who Olivia Rodrigo is, you're probably above the age that needs to worry about emergency <laughs> contraception. <laughs> Our two groups wrote and received educational outreach grants for a joint public education campaign called Abortion Help Mo. It was then that we found out that billboard companies wouldn't accept our ads. <laughs> Many of them said that their billboards were on property owned by churches. And so they couldn't do that. And no outstate radio stations would air our ad. So over the 4th of July weekend, we rented this truck and had it driven around Lake of the Ozarks to reach over a million people. Wow. The driver said he got lots of positive responses. <laughs> The website for Abortion Help Mo is here, and one of the things I like to point, on, point out on that website is the quick exit button on the top right. <laughs> if you are sitting at your desk and a boss or a coworker comes in your cubicle, you can click that quick exit button and it'll take you right back to your desktop. This website answers questions like, is it legal to leave Missouri for an abortion? Or, I think I have found a clinic in Missouri that can do an abortion for me. Is it a crisis pregnancy center or is it real? Okay, so that's where we've been and what we're doing now. Is there any hope for the future? Let's look at this. There are two ballot initiatives on track for the November Missouri ballot, and I encourage you to support both of them. One of them increases minimum wage and paid sick days, and the other one enshrines Roe into the Missouri Constitution. Missourians for Constitutional Freedom is the coalition leading the Missouri ballot initiative to, re to enshrine Roe in the Missouri Constitution. And maybe some of you all helped pass out and get signatures for that um, ballot initiative. Missourians for Constitutional Freedom turned in double the required amount of signatures. Right. Double. And they did it all by the May deadline. To qualify for a ballot initiative, campaigns must get signatures from a certain percentage of registered voters in six of Missouri's eight congressional districts. The campaign's strongest showing was in the St. Louis area. And according to data from elections, the election officials at the Secretary of State's office, they threw out 25,000 signatures from the St. Louis area is invalid, but fortunately, there were more than 53 signatures deemed valid, um, and 25,600 were required. The deadline for the state to officially certify this ballot initiative is August 13th, but it could happen tomorrow. It could happen any day. Missourians for Constitutional Freedom is geared up for the competitive race ahead. More staff is being hired, polling is underway, TV shoots are scheduled. The primary goal is building awareness of Missouri's abortion ban. As polling shows, four in 10 voters don't know abortion is illegal, and six in 10 voters in Missouri don't know that that even includes cases of rape and incest. When voters learn what the amendment really does, they're with us, but voter education is key. So digital ads and TV ads and mailings will begin in September. The campaign needs to raise another $5 million from within Missouri to prove to national funders 
that this race is worth investing in. If the ban is not overturned, we can't start litigating all those draconian laws limiting abortion that I talked about earlier. Remember, Roe didn't disappear overnight. It took the anti-choice people 50 years, one law at a time, to get where we are now. And when the ban is overturned, we will need millions more dollars to litigate overturning these laws, unless a miraculous blue wave hits Jefferson City. Here's another new group I want you to know about. It's called Abortion Justice Now. Please remember that Roe in 1973 was a comp compromise. It legalized abortion care, but put restrictions, allowed states to put restrictions on it. Well, the national GOP has invoked the 14th Amendment and their current abortion platform to prevent all abortions. The 14th Amendment says nobody can be deprived of life by the state without due process. Well, since then, this new group, Abortion Justice Now, has had 88, 80 organizations across the country and hundreds of individuals and independent abortion providers sign on. Planned Parenthood has not, and my guess is the reason that they have not is that none of their um, abortion facilities perform third trimester procedures. You can go to that website and sign on too, abortionjustice.org. This new group believes that patients deserve more than 24 weeks with restrictions. They are reaching federal abortion policymakers, lobbyists, influencers, and advocates to seize a first in our lifetime moment, the opportunity to think beyond restoring Roe versus Wade and instead establish a federal expansive right to abortion, free from the limitations and bans once permitted under Roe. The key thing is that this group supports public funding, no parental involvement, and gestational duration without viability limits. Now let's talk about viability for just a few minutes. What is it? Is it when the fetus, the fetus can survive after birth? Is it when it can survive days or weeks after birth? Years? Is it when it can survive like a typical child without brain damage? And is that at 24 weeks from the first day of the last menstrual period? Or is it a certain size as measured by ultrasound? And if so, which ultrasound scale should you use? Because there are lots of different ultrasound scales. So far, there's no absolute medical definition of viability. Now, some of you may very well be <coughs> uncomfortable with the thought of legal abortion throughout pregnancy, because there are a lot of people that feel that way, and I understand that. I do want you to know that it can cost over $10,000, and there are very few providers across the country who do them. Oregon Health and Science University goes to 34 weeks for medical reasons, and that's the farthest I know of in the country. My husband Matthew is in the back corner of the room here. Matthew and I were told at 34 weeks in a very wanted pregnancy that something was terribly wrong with the fetus. And I can tell you what being denied a third trimester abortion is like. After a C-section, because Amelia's deformed hips would not fit through the birth canal, she spent 31 days in a neonatal intensive care unit at Children's Hospital, unable to move, cry, or swallow. Matthew and I removed life support. If you think a late abortion is tough, think about what we and hundreds of other couples have been forced to do because BJC couldn't perform an abortion. Those 31 days cost thousands of dollars in 1986, and the equivalent now would be hundreds of thousands of dollars, and neither of those figures includes the cost of labor and delivery. Okay, so to move from a personal story to a study, 
John Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health did a study that showed a huge increase in infant mortality in Texas after the laws changed. The biggest jump researchers found was a 23% increase in infant deaths due to congenital abnormalities, a spike caused by Texas mandating that doomed pregnancies be continued to term. And while anti-abortion activists and organizations know that that's extraordinarily unpopular and, and cruel, they're still pushing it. Don't become alarmed at all the money I've just talked about. A lot is needed, but I don't want you to just freeze and go, oh my God, I can't get $5 million. Pick one organization that I've talked about, and I'm, I'll happily share these slides with you all. Pick one organization and give what you can. The anti-choice movement has been plotting for 50 years to get the country where it is today. And we must fight just like those before us fought, not knowing how long it will take. I know we all want immediate gratification, I sure do. But no one in the middle of any conflict or any struggle, any war, has ever known how long it was going to last. Those of you, whoops. Well, it's only one more slide. Can I get back to it? Yeah, kind of. It's just one little one we need there. It has my email address on it, so I want you to have that. Those of you who follow Heather Cox Richardson may have read what E.B. E. White famously wrote to a man who said he'd lost his faith in humanity. E.B. said, hang on to your hat, hang on to your hope, and wind the clock for tomorrow is another day. And now if you have any questions, you may ask them to my face. <laughs> The, um, if the constitutional amendment, if it passes this, um, this November, can the Missouri state government, can they still like veto it or overturn it or say, no, sorry, you don't really want this? Well, they did with Medicare expansion. Right. They did, and they did with uh, the anti-puppy <laughs> mill legislation, mm -hmm. and they tried to do it with right to work. Yep. Failed, thank goodness, but So yeah. they still have the power to just Put aside the will of the people. Yep. Great. <laughs> oh, okay. On a happy note, anybody else have a happy note? <laughs> yeah. Did the donations to the organizations that you had up there, did they publicize those? Like they do, because I know like if it's Ask Blue or something, then you can look up who's donated. To well, Blue. Missouri Abortion Fund works through Act Blue, so you can you can get to us through them. The, the problem with making a donation with a credit card or through Act, Act Blue is that a percentage of it is, you know, we lost about $6,000 last year because it went through Act Blue. Oh, okay. So, send checks. Yeah. Um, you had mentioned something about, uh, I guess, as things stand currently, a person can be prosecuted for like handing an abortion pill to another person. Mm -hmm. um, and I assume you mean in the state of Missouri, is that? So yes. if you were able to get one through uh, through the mail, you know, through an organization or through the mail in Missouri, I mean, that would apply even if like, it was myself as a parent handing a teenage child, like if they're under 18 and so it's my. That's correct. Okay. So you what, what do people do? I mean, I understand that nobody's hanging out in your living room and seeing what's, but you know what I mean. Like, <laughs> I'm not being silly here. Like, do you get in your car and drive over to Illinois and hand them the pill there? I mean, I'm, I'm being kind of half serious here. Well, you know, if you are a Missourian and you go to Illinois and you go to a clinic and you get the abortion pill, they will ask you to spend the night in Illinois. Right. Just in case. So if you were to get it through the mail, it would be probably be wise to do a similar thing, which is maybe go stay in a hotel in Illinois uh -huh. for, for a night. Mm -hmm. okay. Until a miscarriage occurred. Okay. Yeah. Were they trying to ban, was it the Methuselah? Sorry, I'm not a say it. 
Yeah. Mifepristone and Mifeprax, yeah. Well, what happened with that? Uh, well, it's illegal in Missouri now. Okay. Um, it's not illegal in any of the states that are orange. I mean, it is illegal in all the orange states. It's not illegal in the blue states. Yeah, because well, was the Supreme Court debating it earlier, or just like some months ago? Uh, yes, and it's, it's Mifeprax and Mifepristone, it's two medications combined. One unhooks the, the Mifepristone, and if you can't say that, remember the song, Meet the Flintstones? Mifa, Mifepristone. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I've got a learning disability and I always need a little help remembering things. Um, the mifepristone will unhook the developing pregnancy from the uterine wall and the methotrexate will start contractions to force it out. Now methotrexate is used for other things and there are a couple of concerns about that. We don't want people who really need it as, you know, as a heart medication not to be able to get it. And we we, so we don't want it outlawed, but we also don't want so many people using it that it's not available for everybody. So that's a concern. Yeah. So the, am I correct, though, that those medications are available, like in labor and delivery? No, so you can't be induced with it? In so delivery? in medical situations, there are things, so they used to, and this is before Roe fell, I mean, because I've worked in those parts of the hospital, and there were, uh, and this was a Catholic hospital, uh, people that came in with like a life of the mother, or, or in, uh, you know, um, okay. topics. Um, so they were giving those drugs. I mean, because yeah. they had to, because an ectopic topic is not viable anyway, and uh, you know they can't have women dying. So those those drugs were given. Now, as far as what they're doing currently in that, I mean, again, I don't work in that area now, but my understanding is. They, they are either still giving those or they are giving something that cause, does the same. I'm only speaking for like, you know, obviously one hospital system, but I know that when life of the mother, they are still doing that, even in Missouri, from my understanding. I, 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 I just, and I know people that work, I'm just saying like only, and there's an ethics committee involved that has to say like, but I, I'm understanding life of the mother, they are still, providing in some fashion. That's possible, but they are risking. They are. They are they're, they're, they're taking risking. a risk to do that. Can yeah. I see that slide again? Yep. If you can find it. Which one? The one about the Flintstones. <laughs> <laughs> and there may be situations where they send them out to another hospital as well. I mean, I know those well, things have happened in the past that. too. Um, but. I'm, maybe I have my wires crossed some of these medications. Oh. I think I pushed it I can, I can get it later, too. That's fine. I, I do have a follow-up question. You mentioned... Um, can, can you save the computer and we'll go back to that? Yeah. You mentioned residents not coming in, um, which I've known about, but I'm curious, as I have older teens preparing for college, what about other impacts. Colleges are also seeing a decrease in applications because college students don't want to go to a place that makes abortion illegal. Yeah, are there any stats on other professional professions, colleges? Oh, or if there are, I'm not aware of them. Okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Magic. Allison, did I hear that since Roe was overturned, abortion, there's been more abortions than ever in the U.S.? Yes, and Matthew's asked me this question too. Um, there are lots more of abortions that are taking place in blue states. But if you, and, and so that, that seems like a huge increase, but if you factor in the abortions that would have taken place in the orange states, it's a decrease. And then, you know, so you have things like in Texas, they're going somewhere else, but they have a 23% increase in, fe in neonatal deaths because of fetal ab abnormalities. So overall, 
there's been a decrease, but it, I mean, the clinics in Illinois are overwhelmed with people driving from the southern states. You know, they used to, when I worked at Hope, we did abortions three days a week. They now do them six days a week, and so does Planned Parenthood in Fairview Heights. And they can't keep up, so it can take a couple weeks to get an appointment now. Has there been an increase that you know of in the um, medical abortions um, as far as just with the <coughs> MIFO and MISO? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, we think so, but it's really hard to document that if people are going online to get it. There's a mm -hmm. Dutch physician, Rebecca Gompertz, that started Women on Waves, providing abortions in offshore in countries where abortion was illegal. And she's now got a website called Women on Web where you can also order abortion pills. They won't mail them to Missouri, but they will mail them to an address in a legal state. So people are getting them, and we have no way to track that. I don't, I, I don't know. Alex, we think we could anything. track that. Well, I guess you'd have to track sales well, of it. Well, I know there was talk back when Roe fell about, oh, you <coughs> run out and get some now because pretty soon you're not going to be able to get it. Um, so I just didn't know if there was like, there was probably a rush on it back at that time, but I didn't know. If, yeah. Mm -hmm. So like well, you could have it shipped to Hope to go get, go get up there if you order online. Well, Hope could just give it to you. Oh, they, they can get it already. They can give it. But if you had a friend who lived in Illinois, you could do that. Right. Oh, just real quick, I, I didn't know that you can get the morning after pill on Amazon. That and yes. Too, so just, yes, but you have to pay for it on Amazon. Yes, of course, of course. I'm just saying. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>